all my memories of the building is all the activities that happened there. It was constantly in use by the neighbors in the neighborhood and mostly uh, the people who were in our congregation who lived in that area. And the youth programs were so wonderful. My children grew up in the youth programs and there was after school programs and there was Sunday school and the children's choir, they started at four or five years old in the chair of choir. And then it was just a wonderful place to raise a family, but it was just a very, very active place. And the, the women and the men that served as deacons and elders were very, very hardworking. That's what my memory is. I'm Marilyn Vaughn, and I've been here since 1985, but my first memory of this church comes from the early 70s when I was in high school, and I grew up in Modesto, and our church youth group from there came up to Stockton for a, a work retreat, and we built a sandbox and a fence at the children's home of Stockton and we stayed in this church while we were here overnight I don't know two or three days however long we were here and so now fast forward to 1985 John and I had just gotten married and lived in Manteca and he worked in Tracy and uh, teaching music and one of the other music teachers was Dorothy Kaufman and she happened to mention I'm, I'm looking for a, a soprano section leader in my church choir and John said my wife sings because I had just graduated <laughs> from Stanislaus State with a vocal performance major and so uh, so I went the next Sunday to um, you know audition for the choir and it was this church and so I was, you know, I was like, I've been here before. <laughs> and, uh, and so I just, I am so happy to have been able to sing in the choir. I've been in the choir ever since. Um, and sitting up in the choir loft and looking at this beautiful stained glass window with Jesus and his hands, you know, welcoming us. I'm sorry, I'm all emotional now. But it's been a really wonderful thing, and the acoustics are just so naturally wonderful in this building, in this sanctuary, that you know it's just been such a joy and continues to be a joy to sing in. Hi, I'm Bill Alessio. I started coming here when I was very, very little in the 1970s, starting in the nursery, of course, but then upstairs we had a uh, Sunday school for first and second and then there was a third and fourth grade and then the fifth and sixth grade classrooms and then back down into the parlor for grades seventh and eighth when we were in junior high and we sat around and and chatted uh, and also I remember doing the uh, there were two levels of children's choir we rehearsed in the chapel and we had the children had the white robes and then the slightly older children had the red robes and we would come up here and sing a few times uh maybe every other uh, once or twice a month and uh, uh also the um the pageants were uh, on the stage the christmas pageants all the littlest children had uh were sheep in in the christmas pageant and then somewhere I, there must be all the the cotton balls and and uh, um, sheep's ears <laughs> that we wore back then. Uh, I'd like to find some pictures of those. And uh, it's wonderful to have my own children here and uh, let them experience a lot of this themselves. Hi, First Presbyterian Church family. My name is Susie Franklin, and I started attending First Presbyterian Church back in 1971, or at least that's what my parents told me because that's when they started taking me there. And I continued going to church at First Press in person until the mid-1990s when my family moved away to Elk Grove. Back in the day at First Presbyterian Church, I had many memories of the building. I definitely remember when we we 
celebrated the 75th anniversary of the church building. And some of my favorite memories have occurred there at the church. I have definitely early memories of putting on Christmas pageants and going down to the catacombs to dig out the costumes with Eve Roser. And I also have lots of fun memories from when Pastor Kim Nelson was there in the early late 70s, early 80s, because we had a weeknight choir practice and potluck dinner that uh, families with kids would attend and take turns doing the cooking. And uh, quite often we played a game called sardines, which was where you would find a hiding place in the church and then everybody would look for you kind of like hide and seek. But instead of there being lots of people hiding, just one person hid and then everybody else would have to join that person once they found them where they were hiding, which got trickier and trickier the more people there were. So lots of fun memories exploring all the nooks and crannies around the church. As an adult, one of my favorite things about being at First Press was being in the choir and singing under the direction of Dorothy Kaufman. Now that I live 400 miles away in Orange, California, I am so thankful that you have your videos of church because I'm able to attend with you every week, even though I can't be there in person. So hope you guys are all having a wonderful celebration of the church, and I am definitely there with you in spirit. Hi, I'm Anton Ray. And I'm Ellis Ray. I remember being at this church for my first six years of life. And, been, and I remember being here for, for my first two years of life. We remember ringing this bell with our dad. Hi, my name is Eleanor Lawrence, and I have been coming to this church almost as long as we've been in Stockton, which is like 50 years or something like that. It reminds me so much of the church I grew up in, in Kentucky, that it was just home the minute that I walked in with our two daughters. And they grew up in the church, so I have the fond memories of them going through Sunday school, and probably my fondest memories were the Christmas pageants, when we made little bunny ears or cow ears or whatever, you know, for the Christmas pageants. And then the day that um, they were given their own personal Bible, mm -hmm. which was really very, very special. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Sylvia Cavanaugh. Um, I came from Iowa and uh, came to this church in 1978. I joined the church in 1979, I think. Uh, I've been here ever since. I taught Sunday school starting, and uh, for uh, 10, 12 years I taught Sunday school. I've been a deacon. I've been an elder. But this church is my second home. Coming from Iowa, I had no relatives out here. And I just loved this church, this beautiful sanctuary, the stained glass windows, this beautiful organ. When it was played, it was just beautiful. Uh, it just filled the church, and this lovely church with this, its polished pews, and it's just... It's just different from the little home church I had in Iowa, but I, this, this family, and they've been so welcoming. The whole community, this church community is so welcoming, and I've, I just felt like this was my second family, and I am still here feeling that quite a few years later. Um, but anyway, so I just love this church. It was jumping. We used to uh, have sales of uh, used stuff, but uh, we had a lot of fun, a lot of activities and dinners. Uh, but there was always something going on, always. Hello. Well, we came to town in 1974 after mm -hmm. I was in the military. <clears throat> and Cynthia had been a Presbyterian in Santa Rosa for many, 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 many years, and her father and grandfather. So we came here, and the pastor was McCullough. Mm -hmm. And he <clears throat> got us all arranged, and then we saw how big the building was and how solidly it was built and wasn't going anywhere very soon. So we joined up. 
Okay, I converted from Catholicism to Presbyterian because basically they had a Tai Chi class in the gym and it was less far to walk. Um, the Catholic Church was miles away and I didn't have a car at that time when I first moved to Stockton. I got involved in the food bank in the afternoons. Um, I found good friends here in fellowship at the food pantry had 94 individuals coming through feeding families from one to 10 last mm. Wednesday. So that's been a great outreach for the neighborhood. Amen. Hi, I'm Richard Lawhead. First Presbyterian Church and I go way back. As a child, I have memories of Dr. James Baird and his associate pastor, Bud Freeman. Later, I grew up with Mar Marvis Kaiser, David McCulloch, and his assistant pastor at the time, Kim Nelson. There was a host of interim pastors that enriched my life as well. I went to Sunday school, sang in the choir, played my guitar, took my first communion, and was ordained a deacon, all at First Presbyterian Church of Stockton. I remember many wonderful lay leaders as well. Dorothy Calistro, Louise Peterson, Joe Murphy, Ruth Bostrick, Linda Randolph, and many others who nurtured and guided me. Adolescence is a particularly stressful time when I found a family of friends with the church's midweek program that provided dinner, fun, emotional, and spiritual support for junior high kids every Wednesday. Later, I was excited to graduate to the high school group that met in the very cool catacombs downstairs in the basement. So many momentous moments of my youth are associated with First Presbyterian, and for that reason, it will always be beautiful to me. <laughs> All right, Mom, we're here and we're going to talk about First Presbyterian Church. Uh -huh. So when did you start going to the First Presbyterian Church in Stockton? I believe I was five years old. Five, okay. And um, do you have any memories from that time? The one memory I have is of me uh, being with Mrs. Long. Uh-huh. And who is Mrs. Long? Well, the minister's wife. Ah, okay. And was she a Sunday school teacher? I believe she was because I remember her at five years old being with her and she was a teacher. Uh-huh. At that time, the church was just real, real new. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, were, were all the buildings at the church at, the, at one time? The no. gym, no. no they had the gym is not very old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite new. Mm -hmm. No, it's a uh, gym is pretty good. Uh, uh, you remember doing any cooking in that gym kitchen? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and in the kitchen in the uh, hall. Coin and Coin hall. hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And did cooking in both of those. We had uh, wedding anniversaries in the gym. No. Did you ever ring the church bell? No, I never did. I remember that was a, that was a big thing. All the kids wanted to ring that bell. I know, even when I was young, all the kids wanted to ring the church bell. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. It was pretty heavy, I think. Yes. So I joined the choir here at First Pres very soon after I first started attending. So my perspective has, has always been very much this perspective. Um, and I found out that um, church can be a lot like your house. And if you feel really at home, you start putting things in corners the way you do at home. And the, the choir loft, although most of the congregation can't see it, is sort of like a, your cluttered bedroom or living room with stuff in corners. And I feel like maybe it's... Maybe we can feel too at home. We have to pick up after ourselves, but it's a it's a somewhat unique perspective being up here looking the other direction. And um, so it does very much feel like my home in the best and worst ways. So I, I've been attending First Press since I was very little. Uh, I love it here. And I think some of my best memories would have to be uh, when Ashley did my naming ceremony. Uh, just a few summers back and just the love and acceptance I feel here for people 
uh, just knowing who I am and accepting me for who I am is just an amazing thing. And to see how this church has grown over the years is amazing. And especially um, being a newly ordained elder is just a joy in my heart. And I am so glad to be a member here and I always will and I will always call this place home. Hi, I'm Earl Reuter. And I'm Kimberly Reuter. And we have been members of this church since 1983. We were married here by Dr. David McCullough. Right in this spot. In this spot. We raised both our boys. Benjamin was baptized by Dr. David McCullough in, in 18, 1985. <laughs> and Aaron was baptized by Dr. Stephen Carter, Carter in 1991. And when I think about the building, actually, my thoughts go to all the memories in here in this building our wedding the baptisms the memorial services the incredible worship services especially like uh, christmas eve and easters over the years um, it's a very special place it's our home it's our second home <laughs> our first home <laughs> there is first person in church of stockton I have wonderful memories of being a member of First Presbyterian Church of Stockton after completely almost eight years of serving at Tracy Neighborhood House um, with Steve, my husband, who had been uh, uh, became director of Tracy Neighborhood House. Coming to Stockton, First Presbyterian Church was like visiting a magnetic castle with beautiful glass colored windows. I love to sit on the first row to take in the music, the choir, the organ, um, seeing the worship, enjoying the worship, being in with the worship filled my spirit with God's love and presence. I felt blessed. Also, I want to add Westminster Hall as the platform for all types of fellowship and dining, almost next to the worship area. So it was a, that area that I enjoyed most when, because we are, at the Westminster Hall, we could do almost any, any fun things and fellowship. So that was one of my fun places. Nice to be part of that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, I was baptized in that church mm -hmm. shortly after I was born. Um, mm -hmm. So that was 1954. Um, my father attended that church um, from when he was a child. He was three when he moved to uh, Stockton. Um, and my grandmother was... Uh, from Scottish descent and good Scottish people went to Presbyterian church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, when she moved to Stockton, she found first press and that was in 1923. So mm -hmm. that would have been the year it was built. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the building I think is what it means to me is it was a safe place where I felt accepted and where I could go and be with my peers and and enjoy myself and, you know i said earlier my grandmother uh was active in the church um starting in 1923 she passed in 1939 or 40. um but in the 80s my father and two of his brothers um purchased and donated a stained glass window to the chapel um and at the bottom they dedicated it to my grandmother um, and that's, mm -hmm. that's something mm -hmm. I always think of. And, um, there was a lot of love there. There was a, you know, it was family. Um, and it meant a lot to not only my immediate family, but extended family. That was my home church. Right. And my parents, John and Teresa Randolph were members there for over 50 years. A dad was an elder, mom was uh, a deacon and a Sunday school teacher for a while and was with a women's group. I became the youth advisor 
<laughs> for the high school group, uh, kind of by default. And uh, we started doing youth group together for the next two years before I left for San Jose State. And it was that community that made such a difference in my life. And partly why I became a Presbyterian minister later on in life. Wow. And uh, I remember the very first sermon I ever preached was in high school on Sunday morning uh, in the sanctuary. And that was the start of my preaching career. Love it. <laughs> uh, Love it. So I think it was you Sunday or something. And uh, so that was my very first sermon. For me, we started with First Press in the 60s. We came from Cleveland, Ohio. My father brought us to First Press. And that was always a beautiful place to be. And I don't really remember any other African-Americans at the time, but we were welcomed so warmly from the beginning. And Pastor Kaiser was there. Mm -hmm. uh, I just always felt like home when I was there. You know, I could be a little kid and run around and do whatever. And I was part of the choir and I followed in my brother's footsteps and he had gone to youth group as we got older. And I looked forward to my time to go, but I always found that to be a safe place, a respite from the wilds of junior high school, especially. Yes. And the thing that the memory that I wanted to share was that one year, and this was very much a 70s, uh, 60s, 70s things thing. Um, it was Ruth Bostwick, mm -hmm. her daughter, Virginia, my mother and I um, uh, got together. And this was early on when spiritual dancing was part, you know, the, and, and we proceeded down the, the center aisle to the music of Morning is Broken. And mm. that the church was so open and allowing us to do something like that to me was very um, revolutionary, very like, yeah. we can do this in a church. Right. So I think that openness and, and that accepting of all things yes. being part of uh, worshiping and loving God was, mm. was just that we could do this and mm. I don't know. I, it, it, it moved me enough to know that I am accepted in yeah. this place. Thank you so much for taking the time to celebrate our beautiful building. It is so difficult to honor this magnificent space without remembering all the people who made it come alive. We are Doug and Cheryl Hunt. We joined this congregation in 1978, shortly after we were married. Like many of you, our children were baptized here. Sunday school classes and Christmas pageants and the Fishnet Cafe filled their world. They led worship and served as deacons. I think I taught Sunday school in every room from the apartment to the basement to the parlor. The marriages of our sons were celebrated here and cleaning up after Brandon's wedding, Ryan said to me, thanks mom for bringing us up in this building. You taught them well, because now they are very busy pres preserving their church buildings in Washington, DC. This building was designed for the community. During the time of Pastor Stephen Carter, we had all city fifth Sunday night services, and this sanctuary was literally rocked with gospel music. You probably remember other musical events, Doug even spent hours with his tuba in the sanctuary preparing for symphony concerts and teaching at Pacific Conservatory. With Pastor Gus Wright, we were the meeting place for neighborhood prayer walks. And I remember Ruth Strombaum was so delighted to hear all the happy voices when Westminster Hall was exploding with El Dorado school kids in a mentoring program with Restore and with a packed worship service with Gravity Church. And now Family Promise has allowed us to be able to share our space with wonderful families seeking a safe place to call home. We have welcomed other worshiping communities, Reality Church and Church for Me. 
This building would not be here if it weren't for the dedication and commitment of so many of you who served on committees and session, and of course, Presbyterian women who always took on the responsibilities for fellowship and coffee hours emanating from Nita Taylor's spotless kitchen. We are grateful. But where is Doug anyway? Not a day goes by that he's not doing something here for this building and its finances. I can never find him and I know he's here somewhere. <laughs> um, he should be here with me talking. And here I am. <laughs> you know, I know this building intimately and I'll be glad to take you on a tour sometime from the heating space under the sanctuary floor to the hidden light cabin above the stairwell, from the basement blower and furnace room to the attic above Westminster Hall, from the crawl space under the parlor to the 1850 bell by the steeple, from the 18 electric panels to the roofs and solar panels. Well, I have to get back to it now. I distinctly remember one of the first sermons I heard David McCullough preach. It was in September when schools were starting to open and he was describing this building as a cathedral. And then he asked us, what are you building with your life? And so now we enter a new day and the question is, what are we imagining that God can do with this cathedral? And what can God do with each one of us, wherever we are? May our lives be a sanctuary like this, pure and holy, tried and true, always staying alert to the needs of our neighbors, healing hurts and dispelling fears with hymns of joy. To God be the glory for all that God has done for us. <laughs>